We are going for a jog on quite possibly the hottest, one of the hottest days of the year. Now we're in my neighborhood, not going anywhere crazy, just for a light jog. Just to kind of give you guys uh, just a background on myself, because I'm going to be talking about this a lot on the channel, is my love for horror movies. I want to tell you guys how I got into horror and the first, uh, kind of the first movies I've ever seen, horror movies. So for today, I'm gonna tell you about my experiences with horror, first ever. So we're gonna have to bring it back, okay? Now before I tell you the movies I watch in their entirety, I wanna tell you about the first kind of horror experience I really remember. Now the first movies I saw that were horror weren't even in the theater, so we've got two, three things to talk about. First horror experience, then first full movies, and then third would be the first horror movie I saw in theaters. All right, so first one. First time I ever really got scared from movies would uh, would have to be somewhere, I was thinking about it, probably around fifth grade, and we watched, me and my friend Tyler Holder ended up finding a copy of It. Obviously the original uh, TV series one came out in the early 90s, maybe 90. So this is a double VHS, it's a two part TV series and it had Pennywise on the front of the VHS. Now that picture alone was very scary, like definitely nightmare inducing, especially to someone like in fifth grade. So when my parents weren't around, we went up, we got it, and we kind of dared each other how long we can go without turning it off. Now this was definitely during the day, I remember that. So we're upstairs in my mom's, you know, ac room, I think it was in the summer a day just like today <laughs> and we pop in the first one and in the beginning all right spoilers if you've never seen it okay we're watching it in the first maybe 10 15 minutes i think the little girl goes missing you see i think some of pennywise a little bit with the like what is it like the sheets are like kind of flapping in the wind and you get a glimpse of them that kind of scared us a little bit we're watching a little bit longer. The kid goes missing. I think this, the posters go up around town, around Derry. And then you finally get the most infamous, I would say one of the most inf infamous uh, horror scenes of all time. I'd definitely say like top 30. And that's uh, Pennywise in the sewer drain, just like this. And we're watching, all right? Just like this head, boom, pops up. And oh my goodness. Right then and there, I think we might have even known that that scene was a thing. Right then and there, we just turn it off. We paused it, turn it off. So that was that was my very first experience, like with horror, that I remember, of course. Now let's fast forward. You know what? That might that whole story might have even been earlier than fifth grade. Let's just call it let's call it third or fourth. So let's fast forward until I was in maybe six. It's about thirteen for this story. Now these were the first horror movies that I saw in their entirety. Actually, where we are today in Stanford, at the time I was at my best friend's house. He's two years older than me. I've hung out with him and all his friends and they're just more mature, especially at the age of 13 when you're two years older, when he's 15 turning 16 maybe. That two years makes a, a big difference. So I go over there for the birthday and just a little backstory, Max's parents are like best friends with my parents. That's how we know each other. <laughs> we end up, when I go there, I guess, Max's parents never told my parents what we were doing. Probably we were, she, my mom thought we were just gonna, you know, hang around and water balloon fight or something. But instead we actually watched two horror movies. Now I do forget the order, though I want to say the first one was Jeepers Creepers with, um, Oh, uh, the name's slipping me. I'm gonna put the name right here of the actor or I'll look it up. But the actor is actually from Fairfield, Connecticut, which is maybe 30 minutes from where I live. Uh, Jeepers Creepers was the first one. It was a big slumber party. Everyone came over, sleeping bags and all, in his living room. At night, you know, we obviously turned all the lights off, popped it in VHS from Blackbuster, and poof, Jeepers 
friggin' creepers. <laughs> to this day, I guess, I mean, I think it's a good movie, but I can easily be biased, but great movie. The second movie we watched was Jason X. Now, I think both those movies are pretty subpar. I'd say, as far as what critics think, Jeepers Creepers is definitely a more well-received movie. At the time, I wasn't really that scared. It kind of had this vibe throughout the whole movie, or at least the audience, you know, us in the living room. We're kind of laughing at everything. I'm not sure if that was us trying to hide how scared we were, but we kind of laughed about just about everything. And as a 13 year old, right? What's this, 2019 right now? So 13, 2006 era, circa, something around that. You know, when they, uh, spoilers, when the, the guy and the girl in Jeepers Creepers stop at the house and they go down and uh, they get dropped into like the sewer drain thing, into like a little cave. And there were just bodies everywhere on the walls. First, I was super creeped out because it's a scary scene to this day. I still think that's a really good scene. Above all, it's obviously <laughs> nudity in this scene. So 13 year old me and everybody else in the room were just like, oh my gosh. That's the scene I kind of remember the most and, and just the, the concept of the movie, this thing that can smell fear. And, uh, and lastly, the end scene where Jeepers Creepers, I think he puts on like the other face or he looks through the skin or the face of the main person, if I'm not mistaken. And the song in the background, the old, the old tune, Cause Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those beepers? Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those lies? It's always stuck with me. So then, right afterwards, snack on everything. We take out Jeepers Creepers and we pop in Jason X. Now I know who Jason is, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. Whether you be, you, you are 10, 20, 30, maybe even like seven. The hockey mask is just iconic to horror and just pop culture. So it was a character that I knew but knew nothing about. Just kind of that, oh, that character that is from a movie I'm not allowed to watch. And keep in mind, I think my family is very liberal and, and kind of open for me to listen to the music I want and all of that. In movies, I think it was just, this is what kind of just kicked it off. Like after I saw it, it was just like, oh, you know, you've seen it, you can watch horror. So this is kind of that turning point. So we put in Jason X. This is the one that kind of you know, jumped the shark in the whole series is Jason gets sent to space or something like this. They're in space. Maybe they freeze, I think they freeze them and they, they're in space so he can't hurt anybody. And then he thaws out and friggin' wrecks everybody. Machete and all. So much wrong with the movie. But having it be, having it been one of the first horror movies I've ever seen, it just really holds this, you know, soft spot in my heart. And as time went on, years down the road, I've kind of been more of a Freddy fan if I had to compare the two. But having saw this movie, it, this one was definitely more comical than Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers is a conventional horror, uh, a movie made to, to scare you. Whereas Jason X is definitely on that line of like comedy horror. So to finish the night with this movie, was a nice little gesture. The, the scene that stuck out the most, I think there was one where they freeze somebody and they just like, bow, just hacha, just hack the head, hit it with a machete or something. I think it explodes. I'll see if I can put uh, a link in the description to this. Cause it, it's, you know, it's not like super realistic and stay with you, but it was very funny and wild at the same time. We're kind of like nervously laughing. But the scene that really stuck out the most, and I still think is one of the most popular scenes from the movie, would be when Jason, he's in like some VR type of thing. I think it's all fake, maybe to confuse him. He sees these two women and they say something along the lines like, you wanna smoke pot? You wanna have sex? And it's obviously to like lure him in. And he just gets them, puts them in sleeping bags and just like, what the Wrecks them against the pole and Need, uh, did I not already say that they were completely, at least from the waist up, naked? I remember that. It, I don't know what to say. It was like, wow, this is everything my parents and everyone has told me not to watch. Is in this movie is a good example. People exploding with getting hit by a machete. Just, you know, tits everywhere. 
and just something that I've never seen before. That was my second experience, though all in the same night, uh, full movie I watched. I remember watching some movies on DVD. Uh, I remember going to GameStop when they had DVDs at the time. And I got a couple movies. I got one of those box sets, like 20 great horror movies. And they're all like complete black and white. And doesn't mean that they're shit, but they were definitely like public domain where anybody can post them. That's why they did that. So that was kind of bad. But Nightmare on Elm Street, that was one that I watched a lot uh, with friends that would come over. And I'm not much of a person to watch the same movie over, but I, I watched this a handful of times. Though the last part of the story is the first horror movie I saw in theaters. If my memory serves me right, the year must have been 2007. And the movie was The Descent. I saw this with a friend, a couple friends. I remember it's Justin Weinberger who ended up being very claustrophobic. And this is a movie about humanoids living in like a cave. Uh, he went and he got really <laughs> kind of like sick. Andy Greenwald and a few other people. And I remember asking my parents if I could go, because at the time we were 15 and you really needed a parent to buy the tickets or let you in. I feel like nowadays it's more lax, but that could easily be because I'm not paying attention to it because I'm old enough. But my dad had to buy the tickets. And when we went, my dad told me, he's like, you can go see this movie, but you're not sleeping in my bed if it gets too scary. And I don't want to hear about nightmares. So I ended up going, first like big screen horror movie experience and it blew me away. It was everything and more. F from the beginning to the end, it was a, a fantastic movie. Some of the jump scares are top notch and just the practical effects. I mean, I'm trying to think about it. I don't even know what CGI they have in there besides maybe bats flying uh, out of like a little crawl space or something. It just really was, it really was a fantastic movie. So as time went on, I got way more into horror and uh, there's a lot of gaps in these stories that I can fill in at another time. But that is my first experience with horror. And it's led to me uh, having horror be one of my favorite genres. I hope to in the future talk a lot more about it. So please stay tuned. I'm gonna finish my jog and I'll see you guys at the end. We went for 20 minutes, it's about two miles. 128 average beats uh, per minute and burnt 187 calories, 2,800 steps. Well, that's it, that's the run guys. So thanks for going on a run, listening to my uh, rants about horror. If you guys want more about movies, check out the playlist over here. And if you want to see my latest video, you can check out this one right here. Thanks. Goodbye.